Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever the case may be. We are back and better than ever, and we are tackling the exam jam reviews. This is number one that we are tackling right now. Um, and we're going to provide some clarity. Get it? Ha <laughs> oh! All right. So, uh, number one, hopefully this is very easy for you. The following diagram shows triangle ABC. Gives all the labels, angle, side lengths, and it wants us to find AC. I have two sides and an included angle, so that is screaming cosine rule, which is on your formula sheet. So, very simple, very easy. C is the side opposite the angle. A and B are, <coughs> excuse me, the lengths of the sides that include uh, the angle or that form the angle. So I would just say C squared equals um, 7 squared plus 9 squared uh, minus 2 times 7 times 9 times a cosine of 120 degrees. Quick, what's the cosine of 120 degrees? Come on, what is it? Where is it? Negative one half. Good. So then C would equal the square root of 7 squared plus uh, 9 squared minus 2 times 7 times 9. I'm just rewriting this. You don't necessarily have to do it. Cosine 120 degrees. Yes, yes, yes. And this is a paper too. So you don't necessarily have to know the cosine of 120 degrees, but um, you're going to probably be in radians, so make sure that if you're going to do the cosine of 120 degrees, trig, cosine, 120, that you either get your degree symbol from here or uh, you get it from here. Um, if you don't have it in that first spot, you just don't have the latest system. Um, there we go, and that is indeed negative one half. Okay, so now uh, we take all that square, uh, take the square root of it, and we get c equal to the square root of one ninety three, which is equal to thirteen point nine. Easy peasy. All right, uh, find angle BAC. Well. Um, we know that this is about 13.9, so we could use law of cosines again um, and uh, just use this form right here and then use our arc cosine to find the angle. But I think law of sines would be easier. I'm going to say that sine of A over 9, and my sine rule is right here, and it, I, I have, it says A over sine A, but it doesn't matter if you do the sine on top on both sides. It doesn't matter, which we had already learned. So let's see, sine 120. What's the sine of 120 degrees? Root 3 over 2, Mr. Becker. Oh, thank you. Over 13.9. Okay. Uh, cross multiply. <coughs> 13.9. Sine A is equal to um, 9 sine 120. And divide both sides by 13.9, sine A equals 9 sine 120 over 13.9. So then A would equal the arc sine of all of this junk, 9 sine 120 over 13.9. And if you crank that into your calculator, you get that approximately equal to 34.1 degrees. Um, if you're not sure how to do that on your calculator, let's take a quick look. So we're going to do uh, trig, arc sine. I'm going to make a fraction here. Um, what was it? 9 sine 120, I think, I hope. 9 sine 120, and I'm going to do degrees. Okay, oops, oops, and now I have to put that over 13.9. And uh oh, I am in radians, so I would have to multiply that by uh, 180 over pi. And there we go, I get my 34.1 degrees. Okay. Next example, 
Um, okay, so we have let f of x equals 3x squared. The graph of f is translated one unit to the right and two units down. The graph of g is the image of the graph of f after this translation. Write down the coordinates of the vertex of the graph of g. Okay, well, first of all, the vertex of f, we have to recognize it's a parabola, and if it's just 3x squared, it's not shifting anywhere. So the vertex of f is um, 0, 0. Okay? So if I am going to shift one unit to the right and two units down, well, that's a horizontal shift of 1. So 0 is going to go to 1. Two units down is going to be uh, negative 2. So that's my new vertex. Express g in the form of g of x equals 3 times x minus p squared plus q. <coughs> Excuse moi. Okay. So that would be, uh, it's just a translation. Um, so g of x, okay, is going to equal, and I take a look at f of x, a horizontal translation affects the x-axis, or the, um, the horizontal, so that is going to affect, um, uh, you, you, you do a horizontal translation by subtracting from the x. Okay, instead of x, we're going to put x minus 1. And a shift to the right, remember, it's the opposite of your intuition. Right, we think of as positive, but because of... Um, the horizontal shift, it's a subtraction, so x minus 1 squared, and then it's a vertical shift down to minus 2. Done, 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 okay, with part B. All right, the graph of H is the reflection of the graph of G in the x-axis. Write down the coordinates of the vertex of the graph of H. Well, hopefully you can see right away that that is going to be simply one positive 2. And if you don't, well, graph the vertex of g, right? The vertex of g is at 1, 1, negative 2. It's right here. Okay, so that's 1, negative 2. And if I reflect that in the x-axis right here, it's just going to be the exact same distance from the x-axis but above, and clearly that would have coordinates 1, 2. All right, so um, I believe that's it with uh, exam jam one. Um, let's check in with uh, the clarity, see how it's going, and uh, we will see you back for the next solution. Oh, we know how it ends. You are the king of music.